Hello, welcome to Createful Art. Today, let's paint some giraffes on the savanna inspired by the country of South Africa. The first thing that you want to have are your colors mixed. The colors we're using are listed in the lesson plan and I include what those color mixes are. The colors, if you'd like to match mine, are also on the reference photo. Once your colors are mixed, then you just need a few simple supplies. They're listed over here on the left in the art lesson plan and in the video's description. The first step is painting the background sky. First, you wanna choose where to place your sun. I'm adding mine in the upper middle right of the canvas. You can put it lower or higher if you wish. And with your wash brush and yellow paint, you're gonna paint the sky following a circular pattern that starts where you want your sun. I want to make this area bigger than what my sun size is going to be. Then you're going to add on your brush a little bit of the darker yellow to your yellow so that you have this little bit of a darker mix of yellow. But what you're trying to do is go from a lighter yellow to a little bit of a darker yellow as you go around the circle and you can blend it as well as you want and you just keep extending that color on the outside of your circle until you reach the edges of your canvas. So here I am using the pure orange on the very outside and the bottom part of my canvas. So I'll just have a little bit on the outside top and then I will focus this color on the bottom part. Go ahead and blend this as much as you want or be creative with your brush strokes. For this step, we're gonna paint the grass with just the rust color on the same wash brush, paint the grass with short vertical brush strokes. You can layer the short brush strokes across the canvas as you lift off the brush and you pull upward. The more bristly the brush, the more you'll see the individual hairs as you pull up and it'll look like grass. About one inch on the bottom of your canvas is all you need for the grass area. And when you want it lighter, you can dip into your orange or your yellow and just add a few little spots of that. And it'll look like that area has a little bit more glow than the rest of the grasses. Now I'm going to wash out my brush and grab my detail brush. I'm going to add the burnt red to that brush. And just using the very tip, I'm going to add in some long grasses. And they can go straight up or be curved to the right or left. You can add a few of them bunched together or separate. This is a great time to be creative. And this step just adds in some more details so that the painting looks more realistic, but it's not necessary. If you like to have the look that you had before, you don't have to do this step. In the lesson plan, we learn about analogous color schemes. That's the color scheme that we are using in this painting. If you'd like to learn more about it, go ahead and grab the lesson plan the art tutorials like this one help you to practice what you learn in the art lesson and learn how it pertains to art. These lessons are important for every artist, whether you're a beginner or intermediate artist. These lessons are best for adults and kids can also paint along if they're about 12 years old or up. It really depends on the maturity level of the child and if they are skilled enough to be able to follow directions, read, and to hold a paintbrush, and if they're able to complete a lesson that's about usually a half an hour to an hour long. It's important to dedicate time when you are wanting to learn a new skill. I recommend at least dedicating an hour to practice painting and learning more with me. So that's why I have a new tutorial and an art lesson every week for you to enjoy. Plus you have access to 100 plus lessons if you have more time and hundreds of tutorials to choose from. You can go ahead and add as many grasses as you want. You can also add yellow to your brush and add some yellow grasses if you'd like. This is all based on your personal preferences. Then we can go on to the next step together. In this step, we're going to paint the sun so place your round object, I'm using an old medicine top, where you want the sun and trace around it. You can use a watercolor pencil if you wish. I'm gonna show you how to use the tip of your brush to go around it very carefully. You will wanna hold your circular object very still and use the tip of your brush to go around it 
only the tip, don't press down, and then you will get a skinny line to outline your sun. Once you've outlined your sun, then you can grab your round brush and fill in the circle you just made with the light yellow color. Allow the background and sun to dry completely before moving on to the next step. In this step, we're going to paint the tree using our round brush and the darkest color, which it can be black or it can have a little purple in it like mine does. And so what you want to do is place your tree and you want to make sure that their branches are going to cover a little bit of the sun. It helps to have the reference photo that all Create Blart members get. There is also a traceable and a reference photo in the art lesson plan that goes along with this lesson. VIP members get the art lesson plans for the month that they are a member. And then they go into my shop at createblart.com. So the old art lessons on here will be found in my shop. These are ways that I can provide more for my viewers and it helps to support this channel. So thank you if you are a member. So what I'm doing is I'm using the tip of my brush and I don't apply very much pressure and this will create a thinner line. When I want to have a thicker line, then I will push on my brush and it will cover more area. So here I'm just going to create the right side of the tree trunk and then notice I'm pushing on my brush and it's filling in more of the area. So basically we're just going to fill in the trunk area and the thicker part of the tree branches, which will be closer to the center of the tree. As the tree branch goes out, they will get thinner and they'll have little branches coming off of them. You can use the reference photo to help you. So now I'm gonna grab my half inch flat brush and I'm just taking the end of my brush and just making sure the bristles are pulled apart just a little bit. And this will help me create leaves. So I'm basically adding the same dark color to my brush that's almost black. And then notice how I'm dabbing with the corner of my brush. So if I use the end of my brush and it's pretty much solid at the end, I'm gonna get a straight line. But if I used a flat brush that had a frayed end, then I would get this type of look. And I could get it by just using the end of my brush. So any type of brush that has a frayed end will give you a really fast um, leaf look in your tree branch. But because we're using just simple supplies for all of the art lessons in my art lesson plans, we're gonna use the same brushes and I'm gonna teach you how to use those brushes to get the look that you want. That's why getting the full tutorials are so important because you get the why behind why I'm teaching you specific things and why I'm doing certain things the way that I'm doing it. Focus on putting your leaves on the outside of the tree branches and you can play around with how thick or thin you want the paint. You can also add a little bit red in certain areas. If your leaves look a little bit different of a texture than mine, that is okay. Our brushes and our brush strokes will make that part unique to us. In this step, we're going to paint the silhouette of giraffes. Difficult things to draw like this, I add a traceable and a reference photo for my members. This just makes it so much easier to focus on the painting part and doesn't require drawing skills for a successful painting at the end. I recommend using a watercolor pencil or transfer paper to draw out your drafts and while you're drawing, of course you are learning how to draw by filling in your draft and by outlining it. And then with your small round brush or your detail brush, whichever works better for you, you just fill in your giraffe with the black color. All you have to do is go in between the lines. Color is one of the most important parts of a painting. They can make a painting look great and they can make a painting look awful. When you're following a tutorial, you really don't have to think about it because the artist has already made those decisions for you. And most artists aren't gonna tell you why they made those decisions. But when you understand the why behind the artist's color choices, then you can start making your own color choices and be successful in doing so. Don't forget to add the shadow of your grass to the grasses. And then also the shadow of the tree will be in the grasses as well. 
So in the last step, it's always adding your final details based on your personal preferences. This is where I like to teach my members the little things that I do to make my painting look better. Of course, this is just what I think would make my painting look better and that can be different for you. It is my goal that at the end of these lessons, which go along with this African theme, that you will be able to choose your own color schemes successfully. Being able to do so will help you become a better artist. If this sounds like something you want to learn more about, or you would like to get weekly art lessons to help you become a better artist, go ahead and become a Grateful Art member. There's a link right here and in the description. You can also find the lesson plan at createfulart.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you had a great time relaxing and painting with me. I can't wait to share more painting tutorials and art lessons with you, and I'll see you in my next video.